uh, you know, uh, uh, righteous or rational, or, you know, whatever you want to say. I mean, this is stupid because there's nothing in this religion is rational. Hello. Hi, Christian Prince. Hey, Sarah. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm all right. What Thanks do you want to say get... to us? I have one rational thing that. Um... Okay, you as a Muslim, you have something rational for us. Give it to us. Go ahead. Islam is the only religion hmm. that actually unifies all the other faiths under God. That is a big fat lie, my friend. I'll tell you why, Ray. That's a big fat lie. Show it to me. Here we go. It's a challenge in front of it. I'm, I'm not. I'm not uh, insulting you. I'm just saying whoever told you that he lied to you. Show me how Islam unify all religions and the one faith. Go ahead. Well, our understanding is that hmm. there have been over one hundred and eighty-four thousand prophets. It's, it's what? What? There's been over one hundred and eighty-four thousand prophets. One hundred eighty-four thousand prophet. So we believe that all these prophets. Okay, are, what, what what happened to those prophets? What is their names? I'm telling you the the, um, the idea behind why I believe Islam is the only unifying religion. So you see, you just said you just said something proving Muhammad to be a liar, my friend, because you just say there's 184,000 prophets, and the Quran says in chapter 14, verse number four. Uh, we never send any messenger except in the language and the tongue of his own people. Do you agree with the Quran or not? Of course. Okay. So who is the Muslim messenger to India who speak the tongue of India? There's more than 400 languages in India alone. I don't know his name. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm just giving you the general so idea. So from, from all the 400 nation languages, ethnic group in India, you could not find me one person? Isn't it weird? You know, even though I don't know the names of the prophets, but this is I not the problem. This is not the, the issue. The issue is that you are a taking it, you take it, you're taking into consideration as a fact when it is something cannot be proven. I cannot say now that I have a God who sent to every nation, He sent a million messenger. Okay, what give me a name of them? I cannot. That's mean I'm, I'm fabricating a lie. Did the Hindu mention any, any, any prophet uh, is a Muslim prophet before? No. Did the Indian from any religion? There's tons of religion in India. Did they mention that? No. What about the Chinese? What about the Japanese? What about the, 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 the all the Asian nation? Where is those messengers? Did nobody heard of them? Did your God Allah He send a messenger to the Indian in America and North America or South America? So this is a big fat lie. This is alone is a proof to us that Islam is a false religion. Secondly, when you say that Allah He sent 184,000 messenger, but yet still He cannot make us Muslims. This means He's a big failure. No, 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 he's not yes. failure. Uh, listen, you lady, listen, lady. When he sent 184,000 messenger, did he send books with them? I, I don't know. Okay, I that's can't... mean. That's mean that you have a god who have a library, and this library have 184,000 book, but only one book the Muslim claim is left on this library. Your God, your God is the worst librarian ever in history. He could not preserve the 184,000 books and he lost all of them except one. That is the Quran. How we can trust this God to be God? Imagine you have a guy, you give him a, a key for a building and he have inside this building 184,000 book. And then we come back after many years. And then we open the building and we find that in this building there's only one book in the shelf how funny this guardian for the book is he will spend the rest of his life in jail and nobody will believe that he lost them people will believe that he is corrupt and he sold them in the black market don't you agree no what do you mean no what is then where is the, the 184,000 profit books what happened to them all of them they're gone well, you know, the, the some Jamaicans, they also had a prophet. Oh, the um, Jamaican, they have a prophet. Okay. What's his name? His name was Muhammad? No, no, no. They had a pro They Their religion is called Rastafarian, right? Ra so, yeah, Rapso. Yeah, no, okay. What does it have to do with Muhammad, with Allah? You see, you are, it, you are mixing it, things up. The, the Jamaican, they believe in, in voodoo and, you know, many crazy stuff. Don't, don't go there. Listen, listen, lady. Is it true that Aisha, she said that your Quran was eaten by a goat? 
Yeah, I, do, I didn't really study hadiths. You know, I study the Quran a little. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not like as smart as you when it comes to hadith and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so did the, did the Quran was the Quran a victim of a goat? And the goat okay. ate the Quran. Okay. Why Allah? He is God. Yet He could not stop a goat from eating the book of God. I mean, this is not a, this is not an, an army. This is not CIA. This is not a KGB. It's just a poor goat. How the goat ate the book of Allah? Well, you know, humans have a part to play too. It's not just God is going to do everything for us. <coughs> you know, we have to put our... No, but this is not true because the Quran says that Allah is going to preserve the Quran. That can be a good scenario if your God did not open his mouth and he said, Inna alayna jama'uhu wa Qur'anahu. It is on us to collect the Quran and to recite the Quran. So as long as Allah, he is the one who promised that he would collect the Quran, then we cannot accept anyone you know to say to us what you said because he said I'm going it's on me it is on me who Allah you know in the Alina Jama who a Quran who chapter 75 verse number uh, uh, 17 so you cannot say to me oh we have a duty as a human to protect the Quran because Allah he confirmed that this is his duty no, I'm seeing from the goat and like from kids or from something that you know if we have a Quran we put it on the shelf I don't know how, how you can how you can preserve the Quran if the goat ate it already. Can you recite for me the verses which the goat ate? You cannot. That's it. It's in the belly of the goat now. And until now, we could not find this goat. It's missing. If you go to the FBI website, you will you will see in the front page it says the big name wanted. If you go, this is in America. If you go to Saudi Arabia, until now you will see that goat picture is there because until now it's missing, and we need to find desperately those verses. Wait, so did you know that other that you know the way it's preserved is through memorization my, my friend what preserve can you recite for me the verses which was in the which, which the goat ate can you here we go i'm listening to you you preserve it by memorization tell me the verses which the goat ate just as an example no 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 okay so what are you saying that the goat ate a part and now it's not there yes it's not there it's not there there's, it says it says it says that there is ton, the, the the verses of 10 time breastfeeding for adult your God Allah mashallah he allow you as a woman with my respect to you I'm not trying to insult you don't take me wrong but this is what it says that Allah he allow you as a woman to give your breast to a strange man and he will suck it 10 different time and he is satisfied and then after that you are lawful for him to be with him uh, next to him in the in the in the same couch it's not there show me the verse here we go I'm gonna see it well we can't Wait. find this verse that is not what Allah said. Sorry? Where did you get that from? Here we go. It's in the front of us. Here we go. Read with me. The verse of stoning and breastfeeding for adult 10 times was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and the time sheep came and ate it. And then that verse, they continue saying here, and that verses were abrogated in recitation, but not in, in ruling. Okay. So abrogate by recitation by what by a verse about five time five time but we cannot find even the one five times so we cannot find the five we cannot find the ten yeah I don't believe that well, it's not up to you it's, this is this is your history this is your Irish saying that what about your prophet saying he let us let me show you are you saying to me that there is no way in Islam that if the prophet of Allah he ordered women to give their nipples to strangers to suck it ten different time are you saying that yeah that's haram Okay, my lady, here we go. I, again, uh, uh, please don't don't think I'm trying to insult you or to be rude to you. So listen to yeah. me carefully. Here we go. This is Sahih Muslim. And this is Ibn Majah. And this is Sunan and Nisa'i. You choose which book you want. It is Sahih Hadith. And the Muslims agree upon it. That a woman, her name is Sahla bint Suhail. She came to the Prophet and she said to him, there's a you know my husband is upset from the guy who is coming to my house and who you know he stayed with us because he's a slave there he's a man so muhammad he said suckle him she said how i'm going to suckle him and he's a growing man can you see my screen with me yeah i can okay so this is what your prophet said it's a crazy i know it's a very 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 confusing very stupid i mean a People man are you so sure that the prophet said that 
I mean, because this is this is Sahih Muslim. This is not me. This is your scholar saying that. This is your this is Aisha saying that. This is the the, the, the people of around Muhammad saying that. It's not my not, not me. I wasn't there. How do we know that though? How do you know that the Quran says what it says? The Quran is coming to you through the people, to the same people you are receiving the Quran from is the same people who received the hadith from. Okay, but if you know if, if God is telling us, you know, you can't have relations with men outside of marriage, why would this would contradict the Quran? Well, so, this is here according to Muhammad, is not a relationship, it's it is it is something to do to stop any relationship. Muhammad he thinks he's wise. So if a man he look at you in a dirty way, let's say you are going in the bus. You can go by the way if you speak Arabic, you can watch the, the video. You will see uh, an Egyptian, an Egyptian, she was asking a big sheikh from Al Azhar University that uh, she said to him, Are you saying now I work in a studio that I have to give my boobs to all those men who work in the studio? He said, Yes. She said, What if I go in a bus? He said, You have to give it to all of them. So you this is your prophet saying that this, this is not you or me or anyone. The dean of the Azhar University for the Hadith department, he made a fatwa. That a woman, if she want to stay alone with a strange man, she have to give him her boobs ten time, ten different time, not in one time, which means in ten different time, and he have to suck it until he is satisfied. Yeah, I don't believe that. Sorry, you don't believe because you are ashamed of it. This is the whole point. But as you see, it's in the front of you. I'm not the one. This is your Muslim website. This is your Muslim book. This is your Muslim scholar. This is the, the this is the wife of Muhammad, and this is not a Christian prince. No, because in the Quran it says. That the wives of the prophet should stay home and that they are unlike other women and they should yield themselves no yeah my friend the the the, the history of islam report that aisha she took an army to fight ali and she took she she caused the death of more than ten thousand muslims what are you talking about and 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 muslim women they used to be taken for fun with the muslims in the in, during the war time this is why your prophet he allowed you to do muta how many days a muslim man and a muslim women they can have fun together before marriage Zero. Zero. As I know, it's three days and three nights. From where? Well, because your prophet, he said, any man and any woman, they like to have sex together. They can have sex for three days. And if they like it, they can increase. Here we go. Read with me the screen. Do you see it? Allah Messenger said, if any man and woman agree and here they say to, uh, to marry temporarily by the way it doesn't say that this is a uh, this is a fiction between two brackets it doesn't say anywhere to marry so if any man or a woman agree uh, to have three uh, uh, relationship it doesn't say marriage here we go let me show you the arabic i don't know if you know arabic okay so any man, any woman, they like to have relationship together for three nights. If they like, they can increase. And if they like, they can okay, separate. So, so how are you going to prove to us that these hadiths are actually the sayings of the Prophet? Because I don't well, really believe it. You need to prove it to me, not me, not me proving it to you. Because you are the Muslim. You are the Muslim who believe in this garbage, my friend, not me. This is Sahir Bukhari. I don't, I don't believe... I don't believe in anything Muhammad he said. I, I don't believe even if he speak in front of me. I believe this man is a big fat liar. So I am showing you your book. This is not my book. This is Sahih al Bukhari. This is the most authentic book after the Quran. This okay, is well, number what if, two. What if I told you that I don't believe in hadiths. I never actually studied hadiths. Hmm. Felt it was part of my faith. So you believe in the Quran? Yeah. Let me ask you. Do you watch cartoon? Yes, I okay. do watch. The, I like cartoon, me and you. That so we have something to share. Let us see. What about the Quran? It speak about that Suleiman. He have an army of a chicken and army of genie and a human. Do you believe in that? Um. Wait, can you explain that 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 chapter to me? If you go in chapter twenty seven. Verse, you can read it. The whole chapter is very funny. I like it. It's my favorite chapter since I was a kid. I used to read it almost every day, just like especially when we don't have electricity and there's no cartoon on the TV. So, chapter 27, verse number 20. Here we go. Read. You will see it says the following You're a prophet, Suleiman. And supposedly he's a Muslim prophet, like your Muhammad. Muhammad is talking about him. Allah is talking about him now. And it says, and before Suleiman or Solomon 
were marshaled his host of jinn and men and birds and they were all kept in order and ranks like oh ah, one two one two chicken genie human army he have a three army one of genie one of men and one of birds what do you say this is Quran are you going to say to me the Quran is a lie too you don't believe it no I I believe there is something you know there's a message to be hmm. behind the, the story of Solomon Mm. So now you believe that that, that there's a there's a prophet of God. He have an army of birds and chicken Well, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say that he, he doesn't shy away from using what, which, oh, I mean what the point what what I will do with the army of a chicken and look do you know do you know the, the leader of the army of the chicken? Who is he? Do you know who's okay. he do you know who's he his, no. his, his name is al-hudhud. Do you know what al-hudhud is? I uh, know Okay, here we go it says here uh, and he took a master of the bird the master the master of the bird okay the, this is a general 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 do you know, let me show you uh, uh, do you speak Arabic yeah okay if we go now and search for what al-hudhud mean give me a second to show it to you on the screen okay All right, this is Al Hudhud. Let us put it in the screen. Put it in. Small, tiny bird. And obviously, Muhammad, he chose him to be the general because uh, he have something in his head. It looked like a rank. Huh? I mean, it makes sense. So this is Al Hudhud. There's many, many pictures of him. I don't know if you get an idea now. Did you get the idea which one we are talking about? No, I can't see the. Um... You can't see the screen. Look at the screen. Yeah, all I see is the clouds. Okay, now I see. It. Okay, this is the hudhud. According to your Quran, this is General Hudhud, who is in charge of the army of the birds. What do you think? Your God is telling us a true story, or this is something for cartoon for kids? Okay, so there is a, the story of Solomon with the jinn and them. Okay, so let's think about it, right? Mm, let us think about it. Go ahead. We are thinking. Okay, let's let's go back to the, the chapter. Mm. There's jinn. So what do we know about jinn? We know that there's smokeless. There, jinn, what is jinn? Have you ever seen a genie? Yeah, I saw in my dreams a genie before. You saw a genie before? In my dream, though. In your gym? In my dream on your dream ah. <laughs> I saw yeah. I saw you know I, I have I have a friend he saw he saw a genie in his dream it was his mother-in-law I'm not sure what you saw yourself what, what do you mean you saw a genie in your dream what is the genie what is genie um it's a it's another creation by by God uh -huh. and it's made of smokeless fire so when I saw it in my dream I saw the form of the genie hmm. but you can see through it I saw it through it is it true that you Muslims believe that genie can have sex with you? Yeah, I don't know about that. When, what do you mean? I don't know. Know. Come on, be honest with me. You know that. Even there is a Muslim, he opened the door on his wife. He found a fire, with my respect to you, he found the fire in her private part and he claimed that this is, was the reason because of the genie he was sleeping with her because genie is made from fire, correct? I mean, I, don't, I haven't heard that story. Hmm. Like okay. I've never personally experienced anything like that. All right. So now okay. Suleiman, he have an army of genie. What he did with the army of genie? Okay. So he had maybe you know by the permission of God. Yeah, but what he would do with the army of genie and army of chicken? What he would do exactly? He would he occupy which territory with his genie and chicken? Okay. So he. Was he leading a battle in that particular chapter? Uh, no, this is a bird. You know, as, do you see how small this bird? Do you see how small this bird? This is this is smaller than smaller than a pigeon. Pigeon, pigeon is a bigger than than this bird. How First, what what this bird will do in a war time? What this bird can do? Can you tell me? He will go and kill the the small uh, mosquito. What he will do? 
if there is a lot of them they can do some damage yeah man yeah but do you know what this bird is about this bird according to your god he have a special qualification he can see and find women who have no hair in their legs really yeah which I really I I want to buy one because I until now I'm single and I cannot find a woman she don't have hair in her legs so I want to get one like this <laughs> if you know somebody he can sell those birds please you know I want to I want to buy one because I'm desperately looking for a woman she have no hair in her legs he's this is the only one who can do that if Allah says so it must be true <laughs> are you laughing okay so <laughs> anyway, you said so so Solomon, Sarah, Sarah, let us, let, let, us, let us do this, Sarah. You say to me that okay. you, you, you know, you as a Muslim, why you are a Muslim? I mean, look at this. This is don't, 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 can't you tell this is really crazy? I mean, what kind of God? Who is going to believe those? Uh, like, have you, have you, have you heard that Suleiman? He heard the speech of the ant. Did you hear about that story? That Suleiman, he heard the speech of the ant. Yeah, the one where okay. Do you know that the ants don't yeah, talk? The, the ants don't have a speech. Ants are mute. So how should a man he heard the speech of the ant? How he can hear it? Ants are mute. Well, ants it, ants they communicate by chemical and by vibration only. They don't talk. Look here what it says. So when when Suleiman walk with his horse, his army, uh, one of the ants. Uh, in the in the valley of ants by the way my house in the Middle East is about like 20 kilometers from the uh, valley of ant you know we are neighbors so when he arrived there one of the ant one of the ant when he arrived mm -hmm. to the lowly valley of ants one of the ants said oh ye ants get into your habitation lest Solomon and his host which means the, the the army of chicken and the genie crush you under under his foot without knowing it so he smiled amused at her speech how Suleiman was keep... how he can hear the speech of the ant if the ant are mute <clears throat> well if god you know god had to give him that ability mm. do you know how many ants in the value of ants how he can hear only one ant what is the secret behind that i mean only one ant spoke there's like a million ant in there and there's only one ant she spoke and she said hide what about the rest of the ants what they said Takbir? Mm. But I'm saying that if you know, just like Asa, Jesus, mm. he was given powers by God. Ah. So the same thing with Solomon's ability. Okay, why why Asa have power by God and his power about resurrecting people from death, making the blind see? But Suleiman, he have a power of things nobody see. It's uh, just fiction, obviously, like flying carpet. Flying carpet. Suleiman have a flying carpet can. Flying carpet can carry six hundred thousand chair. Do you really believe in flying carpets, uh, Sarah? Be honest with me. You believe in flying carpet? A flying carpet? Yeah. No. You don't believe in flying carpet. What do you mean? I saw it in Alibaba. It's true. Well, I've never seen a carpet flying, so I don't. Know. I saw. I saw it in the cartoon. It's true. As long as it's in the cartoon, it must be true. So, are you saying to me? That you will not believe in a flying carpet if I show it to you now a cartoon? No. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm really, I'm really surprised. I thought cartoon is the best way to make you believe in something. Well, hold on. You just said that you don't believe in a flying carpet, but this is in the Quran. Yeah, but I'm saying that you know Allah did tell us hmm. that some of the stories are metaphorical or you know they're no, those are not those are not metaphorical those are not metaphorical this is about a flying carpet and we can show you what even your prophet said about them there is nothing metaphorical you know chapter 21 verse number 81 if we go just to show you i'm not making things up i will go to the interpretation to show you what interpretation says so you will see the christian prince he have nothing to say from his own okay let us go uh All right. Here we go. And to Suleiman, we subjected the wind strongly ragging means 
We subjected a strong wind to Suleiman Tajribi Amri he running from his command towards the land which he blessed meaning the land of Hashem. Okay, let us see what does that mean. And if everything we are all know are Allah saying, he had a mat made of wood. Who had who had that carpet? Suleiman made of what? Made of wood, which he would place all the equipment of his kingship, horses, camels, tents, and troops, and then he would command the wind to carry it. And he would go, it, it, which means the wind, go uh, underneath it and would carry him aloft, shading him and protecting him uh, from the heat. So Suleiman, now he is he flying with the flying carpet and he put all his kingdom. The whole kingdom is a flying. This is not a Boeing 777. This is bigger, 600,000 chair only. This is chairs. Plus all the animals, plus all the chickens, plus all the, the elephant, all the horses, all the war equipment, everything in the top of the flying carpet. And then in the top of him, there's the birds who fly to keep him in shade. And you know what birds do when they fly in the top of you, they will shower you with boo-poo. You know that, right, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. So Suleiman, now we can imagine how much he is covered by poo-poo. The poo-poo is all over him. He have like a million birds in the top of him. So until he reach wherever he wanted to go in the land so what what your Quran teaching us that Suleiman when he want to go let us say from uh, from Jerusalem he want to go to Los Angeles what he do he say Psh, the flying yeah. carpet come the he flying carpet the uh-huh the flying carpet come and all his army jump in the flying carpet and they put the 600 chairs there and they put all the camels the horses and everybody everybody come on take me Allah Akbar everybody everybody go on the top of the flying carpet and we go to Los Angeles what do you think this is a true story so I think that the um the message of that story is that God gives powers to whom he wants hmm. you know so for Solomon it would be the control of you know the wind the jinn hmm. Um, what else did he do? Mm. So you really, are, so you really believe in the flying carpet? I, I remember just five minutes ago when you told me you don't believe in flying carpet. Now you are saying you believe in the flying carpet. I told you what the what I okay. So the message of it is that God gives powers to whom He wills. Yeah, but this is, is not power. This is flying carpet, my friend. This is not power. This is a flying carpet. What power? This is a okay. flying carpet. Do you really believe in flying carpet? Do you believe that there is somebody who can fly with His kingdom? Um, we fly in airplanes today. I yeah, bet you. The people yeah, fly. yeah, but airplane, airplane is not a flying carpet. There's an engine, and there is etc. And cannot carry six hundred thousand chairs. Six hundred thousand chairs is a bigger than a city. Yeah, but in, we're capable of building an airplane, and no one knew that before. Uh, hold on, but but uh, but there is a huge difference between this and that. You know, this is a flying carpet. You order it by order. Hey, flying carpet, the flying carpet they carry you. And all the kingdom is carried. This is this is this is a, this is a, cannot be true. Why why the Jews? Why the why the the book of the Jews, the Bible, did not mention the flying carpet of Suleiman? I mean, why they are hiding it? What do you think? Do you think the Jews they saw it in auction? They cut it apart and they saw it. In, why the Jews in their holy book did not tell us about the carpet of Suleiman? Is it in there? Have you read the Torah? Well, not in the Torah, but I can find you where Muhammad he got the stories from. There's a book I advise you to read. It's called The Legions of the Jews. Or you can go and get my books from Amazon. Go to Amazon.com. Or if you live in Europe, like Amazon, Germany, etc. And you can get my books. You will see where Muhammad is getting those stories. Muhammad okay. is copying a story from the Legions of the Jews, which is not a true. It's just a fiction. The Jews, they used to tell it to their kids about the glory of Solomon, the glory of uh, uh, David. The glory of their rabbis, the glory of their kings. It's a fiction story. Muhammad, he took it, he put it in his Quran, and he said, this is from my God, this is a true story. But those are stories they used to tell in their kids. Yeah, but um, it is going to say that. Yeah, but obviously, this is a lie. As an example, in the Quran, there's a story about the seven sleepers in chapter 18. Seven sleepers. Everybody knows that this is a story written by a Christian. He is from Syria. His name is Bishop Yaqub. And he wrote a story for the youth to, to, to encourage them to handle the discrimination. It's a fiction story. See, that's my point is that there's, you know, behind the stories, 
whether in the Torah, the yeah, Bible. Yeah, but but uh, but your God, the problem is your God. He takes the story from this guy, which is a fiction story, and he speak about it as if it's real story, and he claims it's coming from Allah. Imagine I write a book. Imagine Shakespeare. He write a book, and then your God, he take the story. He says, "I am the one who wrote the book of Shakespeare." The thing is that you know, from the Bible and from the Torah, this is the same God that's talking. No, it's not the same God. My God, hold on, hold on. We're not the same God. You know, your God is is uh, is not exist. Your God, uh, you know, uh, is a pagan God. As an example, why your prophet he kissed the black stone? Why why your prophet he kissed the black stone? I mean, you read that in Hadith, didn't you? Well, I read I, that in the hadith. I, don't, don't you pray in the direction of that stone today? Don't you? Yeah. Do you know okay. the golden ratio of the earth? The golden ratio. This is have to do with the with the with what? That's a sign for mankind. This is a sign for one card. What? This is the Trinity. Golden ratio is one to two. That's mean a Trinity. Do you, do yeah. you Muslim believe in the Trinity? No, so of the universe, the earth. I mean. I know. I know. But 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 but, but 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 the golden ratio is one to two, three Trinity. So do you believe in the Trinity? No, I don't believe in the truth. So well, you are mentioning the golden ratio. You have nothing to do with the golden ratio. What golden ratio? The the golden ratio where we see it in like when in God's like best creations. Like even the human face has the golden ratio. My my friend, I'm not an atheist. I believe in God. You don't tell me that. This is something you tell to somebody's an atheist. This is not my business now. I'm asking you why you Muslims pray toward the stone in direction of a stone, born in front of a stone, and you kiss a stone. If you are a person who worship the God of Abraham. The God of Moses, and you don't believe in the paganism. Why you kiss the stones and go around the stone and bow down right. in front of a stone? Tell me. So the Qibla was changed, right? The, this, is not the, this, this, is not, this is not the question. Why you kiss a stone, pray in front of a stone, pray in the direction of a stone, go around the stone? This is the question. It's, uh, um, I don't know the answer. I can't tell you the answer. Yeah, because you're a pagan. That's, that, that's the whole story. That's, people who kiss stones, pagan. people who think stones are holy, they must be pagans. As simple as that. There's no holy stone. But stone are is they stone. Worshiping the stone? Huh? They're not worshipping the stone. What? Do, so why you kiss the stone? Tell me. You don't worship the stone. So why you kiss the stone? You know, people kiss food. No, this, this is this. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I kiss food. I yeah. I kiss food as a symbolic for th being thankful for God because I eat it. Okay, do you eat the stone? No. Okay, so I'm, why you kiss the stone? Give me the reason. I kiss my mother as an example. I kiss her hand. Huh? Does that mean I worship my mother? No, but my this is my mother. You, why you kiss the stone? She is your mother. I think people, you know, kiss it because they love the prophet. So, and, so and, and why the prophet kiss? Right okay, here? people they kiss. Guys, this is a good answer. She's smart. People they kiss the stone because they love the prophet. Okay, why the prophet he kissed the stone? I don't know why he, he did that. Mm, because he's a pagan, obviously. He's a pagan man, you know. You you Muslims, you follow Muhammad blindly. It doesn't matter what he do. He kisses a stone, he kisses a stone. You know, I, I don't want to be rude with you. What if Muhammad he kissed a donkey? Are you going to kiss the donkey too? What if Muhammad he tie a donkey to the Kaaba and he kissed the, the bum of the donkey? Are you all of you Muslims you will kiss the donkey just because he kissed the donkey? You do know that he his his job was to deliver the message and he's done that what message he, he made a message says any woman she want to take off her panty is that the message of god any that woman she want to give her panty off to me she is welcome this is a message of god no okay so why he gave this message what does this message have to do with islam if islam is about worshiping god why god he claimed that he gave muhammad verses saying any woman she want to take off her panty to muhammad she is welcome what is this message is about tell me yeah, that sounds like someone corrupted it. Thank you very much. Here we go. We are we are getting closer. So that's mean the one who, who the one who corrupt this verse must be the one who have the benefit of the verse. Do you agree? But I don't think that the Quran is corrupt. I think that hadiths have been tampered with. Yeah. Ah, okay. That's a, that's a good idea. But you agree that uh, that idea must be a corrupt. But my 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 friend, this is in the Quran. It's not in the hadith. And you agree that this is must be corrupt. So it doesn't matter I, where we find it. You say you thought I'm speaking about the Quran, about the hadith. So you said, yeah, I agree, it's corrupt. But now because I I said it's in the Quran, you will say no, it's not corrupt, right? You will you will swallow your tongue again, or you well, will be it, honest. You will be honest. You will stay, and you say yes, must be corrupt. Well, I don't believe the Quran is corrupt, and I have many reasons. Yeah, but uh, but you are the one a second ago you said that such a verse or such a statement must be corrupt, and you thought this is hadith, but this is Quran. Yeah, because in the Quran it says, mm. and do not, you know, don't go towards the fahishat, right? And one of these my, my, is my friend, my friend, why Allah, let me repeat the question for you. And you are the one who said it must be corrupt. I said, why Allah will make a verse says 
to Muhammad that Muhammad told uh, Allah told Muhammad any woman she give she want to give out her panty to him she is welcome you said this is must be corrupt okay this is Quran so I'm repeating the question for you why Muhammad he need a message like this what Islam do have to do with this what the message of worshiping Allah have to do with any woman she want to take off her panty to the Prophet she is welcome what that will do to Islam wait can you go to that verse no oh, problem. Chapter 33, verse number 50. Here we go. Here we go. And this is only a privilege to Muhammad. Only. Only a privilege to Muhammad. Any believing woman. And any believing woman who dictate her panty to the Prophet. If the Prophet wished to with her, to, she doesn't say, you know, it says to, to sleep with her. And this is only for thee, not for the believer. Isn't it obvious that this is a corrupt verse made by the corrupt man Muhammad for the benefit of Muhammad? Who is the only one who get the benefit of this privilege? Muhammad. It's like making a fight a fake insurance policy. The first, the first thing the, the, the police will investigate is the one who get the benefit from this policy. If somebody kills somebody, and this body he is going to inherit the policy of let's say life insurance, then the police they the first, the first thing they try to check is the one who get the benefit of the insurance because he's the one, he's the one who get the benefit. Who is the one who get the benefit here in this verse? Muhammad. Any believing woman, she wanna give her panty to the prophet. Why God? What 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 Islam have to do with this message? What Allah have to do with this message? That any woman she can give her panty to the prophet. I think that says so. What, what do you mean, God? So so? Why God wanna say so? This is the question. What is what this have to do with Islam? I want I want to be a Muslim. Okay, and now God is saying any women including my wife my daughter She want to take off her panty put her legs up to the Prophet. What is that? That's not what it says. It's, this is what it says any women She can give her to the Prophet and not only that Muhammad well, after, um, look, Hold on after that Muhammad he start receiving ugly women They want to sleep with him and Muhammad he look at them. They are disgusting. So look what he did He made the verse right after it. He says though may defer who you know the, the one the one who turned away from him or the one who choose so Muhammad he can look okay, let us say you come to him he don't like how you look like maybe you're older so he say okay oh oh I, this is too much too many women they are coming to sleep with me so what I will do now so he made a verse says that Allah told me I might choose and I might delay the one later later you know later so Muhammad he has given himself more excuse to use and abuse women because there's many ugly women they start coming to Muhammad and the reason they want to sleep with him because if they step with Muhammad, they will be considered as women of Muhammad, and that means they will have a free food forever. They will have a retirement plan. They will have respect to the believers because that's it. They are the excuse my language. They are the bitches of Muhammad. You see the so, gang. This, you see the gangs. They say like excuse my language. I don't want to use a bad word, but yeah, they, you should respect the dead. I mean, let them let them rest in peace. I am not. Res I'm not respecting him. This guy, obviously, he is. I'm not talking about your dad. What your dad? I'm talking about your Muhammad. You called the females the B word. This is, this is what it says. This is about those are those are the the whores of Muhammad. They are his, they are at his wives. They are offering themselves for sex. Not true. If somebody's offering themselves for marriage, that's completely. This is not marriage. This is not marriage. Muhammad, he have thirteen women, women already. Name for me one woman. She offered herself to Muhammad. She became his wife. Go ahead. Do your best. I'm listening. Yes, they married for tribal. No, no, no. I'm listen to me carefully. Those women who offer themselves, name for me one of them, she became his wife. None. Does it even name the females in the Quran? None of them. None of those because they are not considered their, all, all the females. There's no limit. It's, it's a privilege for the Prophet only. So Muhammad is looking for women to take off her the panty. It doesn't matter who they are. But Muhammad what? already already have 13 wives. Why he need more? Right now, you're you're interpreting it from your perspective, right? I am not giving interpretation. I am not. Here we go. It's in front of you. You give an interpretation. Any yes. believing lady? Do you see? It says any believing women. Did you see any 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 believing women who who right. like to dictate her her not her soul? It says nafsaha in Arabic, which means this is about sex. This is about sleeping with him. Nafsaha, her soul. Yes. Yes. So what what he what he will get from her? What he will get from this woman? Sex. Okay, name for me, name for me one woman. She dictated herself to Muhammad and she became his wife. Look, so any believing woman mm. who dedicates her soul to the Prophet. To do what? Prophet to wishes. Do what? To do what? To do what to him? Exactly. To what she would do? 
to wed her. What what the service he want from her? What with her? Okay, so if he's traveling and women are you know want to marry him, they're also gonna you know be pushing the message. So he's gonna but give lady, him. lady. Do you see where it says here? Yes, thank you, ha. Yes, thank you, ha. Is a continued verse when you speak Arabic, don't you? Okay, so is it if continue? He got is it continue? Yes or no? Am I lying? It's I in G to F her. This is not to marry her. Marry so, you marry only once. Okay, not so why does it say the prophet wishes to wed her? What is that? What mean? is with her? There's no with her here. Same time, name for me one woman of those women who offered themselves. He with her. He slept with her, yes, but he, that not even one of them became his wife. Otherwise, name one for me. Go ahead. What does wed mean then? Mary, really? Mary, 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 Mary. But there's no Mary here. It's the word is just thank you. Yanka how in Arabic mean to F the F word. The word the word marriage in Arabic is zawaj. You speak Arabic like me. Tazawaj, tazawaj, not tazawaj. Zawaj, I use zawaj. You tazwijan. Yes, thank you. This is nukah, the, the the actual verb of the sex or the F word. Okay, so, and nukah in Arabic means marriage. No, no. Let me show you. Here we go. I will show you from your Islamic Islamic website what is the nikah mean. Give me a second. Here we go. We don't make things up, lady. We don't. Everything we say, we prove. It means it's like marriage contracts. Well, from my understanding. Okay. Okay. Let us see. No. All right, look with me in the screen. I will show you on the screen now. This is Islam al Islam.org website. Do you see the you see the, the top? This is not a Christian website. All right, al Islam.org. I think it's clear for you, right? Yeah, we don't I don't see I see the clouds right now. Okay, do you see it now? Maybe it take time to come to you. Do you see it now? No, not yet. Okay, it will take maybe a second. So this is alislam.org. This is your Islamic website, and it says it clearly that the word nikah literally mean intercourse. Okay, so read with me carefully. In okay. Islam, marriage is not restricted of a, a, a platonic relationship between a husband and wife, nor it is a sl uh, uh, solely uh, for a uh, propagation, the Islamic term of marriage is nikah. You see it literally, yeah. literally means sexual intercourse. So, marriage is about that. Are you sure saying? I'm not saying that, it's you who's saying that. There's no there's no marriage in Islam. You don't use the word marriage, you say the F word. We, as an Arab Christian, we use the word zawaj. You, as a Muslim, you use nikah, the F word. What is marriage? So this is the same word is in the Arabic Quran. It says just mm -hmm. yes, thank you, her, which means to do intercourse with her. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So any Muslim women she want to do intercourse with the Prophet. Why? Okay, but it, it, within marriage. Though. Why? Why? What well, is no marriage? What marriage? I just told you. Give me one woman. She gave herself as a gift to the Prophet to yes thank you, her. She became his wife. Give me one. You cannot. There's none. He slept with many women, but there's none of them became his wife because it was it was just for fun. Now, why Allah he need to make a verse for Muhammad that any believing woman she can give her pantry to the Prophet? What is the benefit of Islam for that? Muhammad already is not a single man. You see, if Muhammad was a single man and he's trying to find Muhammad a woman to marry him, I will say, okay, the guy he is trying to find a woman to to so, to marry him to be with him. But the guy, he have tons of women. He have many sex slaves in the top of that. Why he need to make such a verse? Says any woman she want to sleep with me, she is welcome. And he claimed that the one who said that is Allah. Yeah. Why? I mean, everything that's in the Quran is the word of Allah. Yeah, so this, is, this is what I'm saying. So why Allah need to make a verse? Says any woman she can give her private part to Muhammad. Why is that? What 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 that will benefit Islam with? What is the point? Muhammad is a man busy with God. He's a prophet of God. This guy, he should be not have time for women. But look, he make tons of verses, and this is a privilege only for him. 
This is not even for the Muslims. It's only for him. There's no other Muslim can do that. Isn't it obvious that this is Muhammad he himself is a corrupt man and he's fabricating words that he claimed that God he gave it to him? I mean, every so I don't know why Allah would tell him to do that, but I, I can only guess. So yeah, I guess. Okay, I guess. Let us see. Guess. Go ahead. And I'm listening. Why? I guess. Why? Why Allah gave him that privilege? I guess to um entertainment. You think Muhammad is bored at that time? There's no 4K TV. And he cannot no. watch porn, so Muhammad he wanted some women to take off their panty for him. No, I don't think that's it. So what I think the reason? Was... What the reason? He have many wives already. So what the reason? That's one of the guesses that we could we could assume. Okay, so so you, so this is a right guess. Then he said yeah, because you accept it. Okay, what else? Or it could be that you know to build relations, like to network in network here... relation by women only. This guy he want to build relationship in the network, guys. He want to open many Facebook with many women, and they take off his pan their panty for. What does this have to do with relationship? Do you know how important women are? Like they play such a huge role when it comes to um, communities. Aren't you the one who told me a second ago that women they have to stay at home, and now you are saying to me they play a, 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 a great, a great uh, uh, place in, in society? What society? It's those are those are believing women already. They are believing women, so they are Muslims. He's not even converting them. They are believing women. They want to take off their panty to the prophet to do what? Entertainment, obviously. It's about sex. There's nothing else. Does it say he wants to spread Islam with them? He want to do what he would do. The only thing is he's going to F them. As simple as that. I mean, that's 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 what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Thank you very much. I agree. That's what it is. Muhammad is a is a, is a person who is taking advantage of him claiming to be a prophet, using the poor people around him, ha having sex with their women, and even mm -hmm. Ibn al-Arabi said, "Let me listen." Ibn al-Arabi said. That if the prophet his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her immediately so the prophet he can have her. You know that? Do you know that? Okay, so if she gives herself onto the prophet, what, but, but do you agree that if a, if, a, if a man his name is Muhammad, his eye fail onto you, your husband have to divorce you immediately? Do you agree with that? I mean. Like in what are you talking about? You are let us say you are walking. I'm not I'm not insulting you by the way, don't take it as personal. Let us say you are walking in front of Muhammad and he saw you, he liked you. Uh uh according to Islam, if his eyes fail unto you, which means he saw you, he liked you, your husband he have to divorce you immediately so Muhammad can sleep with you. Do you agree with that? No. Well, this is what it is. That's what you're saying it is. I'm not saying that. that. I will show you the reference. You want to see the reference? You want to see the reference? Sure. Okay. Let me find the reference. Let us see. All right, this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and this is the Sir Al Qurtubi. I'm sure you are. You know what Al Qurtubi is, right? No. You do not know what Qurtubi is. He's a big scholar in Islam. Anyway, this is the Saudi Kingdom, the Saudi Arabia Kingdom website. All right, very well known website. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi, and here Ibn al Arabi is speaking about the privilege of the Prophet, and he is saying there's sixteen of them. All of them, or most of them, is about women and sex with women, or with money. Look what he say here. <clears throat> قال ابن العربي. Let us see what قال ابن العربي. This is Quran interpretation for that verse. Read. You know Arabic that will make it a lot easier for me. Do you see in front of you on the screen the Arabic? Do you see it, Sarah? Do you see the Arabic? 
I see it. Okay. Does it say? إذا وقع بصره على امرأة وجب على زوجها طلاقها وحل له وحل له نكاحها. How disgusting that is! You just said you you don't accept that. If he, if Muhammad, he look at you and he like you, your husband must divorce you immediately. So the Prophet, he can, with my respect to you, he can sleep with you. What do you say? Interpretation or sorry, say again. You, I lost you. What you said? What? When the Quran that is? This is the interpretation for the Quran. It says it clearly that if the Prophet of Allah his eyes fall into a woman, her husband he must immediately divorce the woman so the Prophet he can F her immediately. Why? I know, but can you tell me where which chapter in the Quran that is so I can read it for myself? This is the same chapter we are talking about, uh, lady. I know you are not listening to me. This is the same chapter. Listen, this is this is the same chapter, chapter thirty-three, verse number fifty, and this is Tafsir al qurtubi and this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Let me show you the banner, so you will see. I'm not making things up. This is Tafsir al qurtubi and here I will show you the Saudi Arabia banner address. Here we go. All right. Do you see it? Do you see the screen? Quran.ksu.education.edu.sa Saudi Arabia. This is a government official website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and this is Tafsir al Qurtubi. And this is what your Islamic cult teach. This is not be a prophet, this is a scam bag. Sarah, Sarah, my 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 friend, my friend, my um, allow me, allow me to to call you my sister. Maybe you are my younger sister, my sister. I invite you to leave this cult. This cult is disgusting. Muhammad cannot be a prophet of God. There is no way a man he have a dignity. He will force a man to divorce his wife just because he look at his wife and he like her. That is disgusting. That is satanic. That is cannot be a prophet of God. Your net is bad. Did you hear me, Sarah? I invite you to leave this cult, Sarah. There is no way, and you are the one who said you don't accept that. You you said that to me. You don't accept that because you have dignity, because you are a good woman. You don't accept that. This is disgusting. A good woman like you don't fit here. This is a, this is not a religion for you, Sarah. What kind of a prophet you would do that? Do you hear me now? So I invite you, Sarah, to leave this cult. This is this is not a good. This is not a religion. This is a, this is a scam. This is a sex uh, monster. This is a guy who want to take advantage of you. You want, did you decide to leave Islam, Sarah, or not yet? Did you decide to leave Islam? Say yes. Leave this cult. This is satanic. It's obvious. Go and follow the holy Jesus, the holy name, follow the holy Christ who never, never, never commit a sin. Why in the world do you want to follow such a man and you ignore the best of the best, the Messiah, the Messiah, the best of everyone? There's no one like him. Why you want to follow a man like this? What kind of a man? This guy is not even qualified to work a gardener for you. You don't even trust him to be in your house. Your husband will not even trust him to be alone with you. He was known as trustworthy. Say again, what? One who is trusted. Say again, what? He was known as an Amin. What Amin? This is Amin. Did you hear the story of your prophet? He went to his own son and he flirted with the wife when she's married to him. What Amin? Amin mean trustworthy. Muhammad, he went to Zainab. He went to Zainab. Listen, what what Amin? Muhammad, he went to Zainab when the husband was not there and he flirted with Zainab. And he said to her, praise be to Allah, the, the, the one who made my heart flip for you. This is trustworthy. What can trustworthy? Imagine I go to visit you and I'm your, I am your father-in-law. And then when I see you, I flirt with you. And then you tell your husband and then I take you from your husband and then I sleep with you. This is the trustworthy. 
Take care, Sarah. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Muhammad is trustworthy. If this is trustworthy, what trust garbage is? <coughs> hey, stay Shadi. How are you? You want to call me? By the way, uh, uh, Shadi, in Iraq, Shadi mean a monkey. I don't know what you mean by calling yourself monkey. I am making up stories. I show it in the screen. Everybody see that whatever I speak of, I show it in the screen. I never say something without proof. Challenge me. Do you speak Arabic? And she saw it and she read it. Who is next? Who is next? Who want to prove to me that Muhammad is anything to be even qualified to work in the post office? Muhammad is not qualified to work in the post office because we cannot trust him to deliver the letters. He will open them, he will stay what is inside, especially if it's pictures for women. If you work for Amazon, there's no delivery for lingerie ever will arrive to any woman in the world. He will open the boxes, he will sniff the panties, and he will keep them at home. Who's next? I am the Christian Prince, and none of you Muslims dare to debate me. You see, I was speaking to this girl, very nice, very kind, and I'm going down to her level. Show me that you can do better. Who is a Muslim can do better? Why liar? Why liar? Here we go. Let me show you. You are saying it to me, I'm liar. Your prophet was accused by you, Muslim, that he stole an underwear. Do you want to show you that, Shadi? Let me show you. Here we go. Guys, he's saying I'm a liar. You tell me if Muhammad was stealing underwear, according to the Quran, he was stealing it for what? To wear it or to, to sniff it? The underwear was red. Let's read together. <clears throat> and even the chapter number is a miracle. Chapter 3, verse number 161. Let us go to the interpretation. I'm lying, right? Okay. Let us see. <coughs> okay. Read with me, I love. Let us see who's lying. And as you see, those are your Islamic books, not mine. Your prophet was an underwear thief. And now you tell me he was doing what with it? Hmm? You tell me. Here we go. When some red velvet cloth went missing in the day of Badr, Some people began to say, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps the prophet took it. Do you see it? The Muslims are fighting over what they stole. This is already a theft. The attack of Badr is the Muslims attacking people, attacking caravan, attacking money of people. They are thieves. And now they are fighting over a piece of a clothing which is a bikini. Do you see a trustworthy? And then what happened? Allah, He sent the verse, says, No way, it's not Muhammad. No way. Okay, hold on. If you are God, why you don't tell us who is the one who took it? I mean, look at this. God, he sent the message saying, it's not Muhammad who stole the underwear. What about you tell us who took it? Until now, the underwear is missing. Until now, if you go to the website of the police of Saudi Arabia, they have a big prize for the one who will find the underwear which Muhammad was accused to steal. 
any Muslim can tell me where we can find this piece of a cloth which Allah himself now is busy God the one who created the galaxies he sent the verse about the underwear I mean are you serious God who created this amazing massive space and galaxies and star the earth is not even a dust he sent his word his priceless words to defend a man was accused of a stain underwear that's amazing Any Muslim? Look like a Muslim when I make me ta take Shahada. Let's see what this is about. <coughs> take Shahada, you're right. Potatoes. Any Abdul? <laughs> Hello. Yes. This is Gigi. How are you? Hey, Gigi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm good. Listen, I don't want to debate you because uh -huh. I'm not a debater. But you are a Muslim, right? Admit, you are a Muslim, right? Uh, oh, la la. I'm talking. Let me just finish what I'm telling you. Oh, la la. Okay. Uh, la la means no. You know that now. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So I'm not a debater and I'm not going to debate you. What you would debate I, me I'm about not. if you aren't a Muslim? But, you know, I have nothing to debate but, about with you. Yeah. La la. Uh, let me talk. Uh -huh. Let me talk. Uh huh. But my friend, mm -hmm. who is a very knowledgeable Muslim, mm -hmm. who who can debate you sitting in a car with nothing, wants to debate you, and you refuse to do that on Facebook Live. I don't understand why what you Facebook? can't debate I I, anywhere. I don't, I don't do I don't do broadcast on Facebook. I do it here. All my people listening are here. Why he don't come here? Why you don't call me in Skype? Well, you don't. You do not need to go anywhere. What about call me in Skype? He can. He can do live in Skype in in, in, in YouTube in, in in Facebook. He can do it Skype in, in Facebook. But the reason the reason why you don't want to do that is because you don't want to leave your stuff, your what, copy and paste stuff? and all like this. What stuff? What copy? You, I, I have to show my reference also, in the screen. Let me, hold let on, me hold this. on. I have to show my the reference. Guy, is it about, is it about listen, talking or about proving? Is it about talking or proving? I have to show the reference the in the screen. That, why don't is you show your is face? Facebook is fa you hold on face? is Facebook is internet or it's not I thought you were I thought you weren't rude you are I, rude. I was, you are rude you are not, saying to, you are accusing me I, I cannot leave my place who are you what do you know about me what what place what place do you want me to sit with him in his car why want to go to his car is that we have a date I didn't say go to his car so where I will go what I will go where I will go where I will go where I will go to debate him tell me where where I will go to Oh where GG GG where I will go to debate him? Tell me where I will go to debate him. Go ahead. You can go. You you have a page on Facebook and filled with lies and rude and crazy stuff about Islam. I'm a Christian before. Yeah. I know. Listen, listen, I know what listen. You're doing. Let, us, let us prove who is the liar. Prove to me one lie I said in Facebook. Go ahead. Prove to you. I don't have to prove anything. You have to prove it right because when now. you say somebody is lying, you have You're to prove him a liar. Aren't you the one saying to me that there's a I guy said, he can get I you busted? Said, listen, listen, listen. You both of you, both of you are a piece of garbage because if you are truthful in what you are See, saying, what I'm talking about. You are, now yes, you are a piece garbage. of garbage because if you are not, you will not <laughs> accuse me of lies, but you cannot prove it. When you accuse somebody you're of lies, when you accuse, I don't respect you. I don't, I don't respect you. Get lost, get lost. I don't respect you when you cannot prove me. To be a liar when you say to somebody you are a liar and i say to you 
show me one lie I said you said I don't have to prove it that's because you are a scumbag how stupid are you I want you to prove that we lie in Facebook go ahead I'm listening Are you there? Hello? <laughs> Let's go. <coughs> when you have better internet, call me. Who is a Muslim you have the courage to call me? Here we go. I just received a message from a person who decided to leave us now. I will not show all his name. I will show a part of his message. I don't even have him in my list. Here we go. Do you see it? People are leaving Islam for a very simple reason. It's a garbage. When a Muslim, he says to me, you are posting lies, and then he don't dare to call me to show me the lies. Obviously, everybody knows who is the liar. Muslims are leaving by thousands, thousands Islam because of my videos. And this is why you are so angry and so upset. You say he's lying, but you cannot show where is my lies. Then who is the liar? Who is next? Who want to leave Islam? <coughs> hmm? Who is next? Who is a Muslim want to call me and show me that I am lying? Right? Look, this guy, he's saying the stone is not worship. We kiss the stone to what? Hold on, hold on. We kiss the stone because Muhammad B, 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 U, H, they did. I mean, look how stupid the answer is. Guys, when I say... Every Muslim is a stupid until he proved the opposite. I am not insulting. Here we go. We kiss the stone because Muhammad B B B U H he kiss it. Okay, why he kiss it? Why he kiss it? Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh hello, CP. Yes, my friend. I hear you. Uh I was uh, talking to you earlier about uh <laughs> what's it called? Uh, justification for things done in the past, like whether in the Quran or the Bible. Yeah, but and, this, is, this, uh, this is not the time. I want, I want, to, I want to take a Muslim cause. They are trying to call me. Please go ahead. Don't call me for now. Let us see what the Muslims want to say. <coughs> oh, this is Gigi. Hey, Gigi, how are you? So, did you find the lies I post in Facebook, or you did not find one? Okay, listen one second before we before you go any further. Hmm. You, you apologize to me for calling me garbage. I'm not garbage. I didn't say you were garbage. You said I'm lying. I, you said I'm lying. I, this is lies are being told about. Okay, I did listen. Not say when when somebody when you said somebody that did lie, he told I am the one who told those lies supposedly. So you're accusing me to be a liar. You're not so garbage. prove you it. No, you prove it. That. Prove it. Otherwise, this is garbage. Prove it that I did lie. Show me one lie. Go ahead. You said, you said I'm you listening. Said I'm I am garbage. listening. I am listening. Show me one lie I said. Go ahead. I don't talk with somebody that disrespects me and calls me garbage. You are the I one who accused me to be a liar. You are disrespecting me. Now you have to prove me to be a liar. Said, Otherwise, you I are not a decent woman. Saying on Facebook about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is lies. And you know they're Show lies. Show me one. Show me one. Which one? 
You have tons of it in Which there. Which one? Tons Give me one. Give me one. Just prove me. Uh, get me busted in front of everybody. Let's, I have I have 800 people listening to me right now. Show me no, one lie. Gonna... Show me, lady. If you are a truthful, no. if I, I you see <laughs> you want me you want me to treat you with respect, correct? Okay. Treat me with respect. I treat you with respect. Show me one lie. Let us talk about as uh, civil people. Show me one lie. Get me busted. Everybody is watching. Go ahead. All right, you can put on your showboat and stuff. That doesn't work with me or your 800 viewers. I'm just telling you. You I are just telling you. me nothing because you cannot show me one lie. Why you are saying I am posting lies, but yet you cannot point your finger at one. What's wrong with you? Something wrong with you. Other, other, otherwise, either you are lying or I'm lying. So why you don't show? I am showing you. I'm, I'm giving you opportunity in front of 800 people to show them that I am a liar. Name for me one lie. <laughs> Listen to how he's running, everybody. 800 people out there listening to him he refuses to come on facebook and debate and i debate am in facebook you idiot are you a donkey or what because i post in facebook each time i go live so if your friend is a man he can call me in skype what the difference between facebook and here as long you can call me why he cannot call me as long you can call me and you are a stupid woman who do not know anything about islam why he don't dare to call me if he is knowledgeable if you are if you are the stupid one yet you can call me and you know how to use skype and you know how to use facebook why your stupid boyfriend? Why your stupid boyfriend? He don't call me. What's wrong with him? Boyfriend, he's a brother of mine. He's what a brother. brother? There's no brother in Islam. There's no brother. A, a, a woman and man in Islam. Muhammad he said, if women and male and female they are together, that the third is the devil. Do you agree or not? Sick. You have a sick mind. You are the sick. Prophet. You're a prophet. He said. You're a prophet. He said. Any woman she wanna give her pen to the prophet, she get. He have to give it to him right away. Do you agree or not? Really. Yes, really. Yes, really. I can't believe you have one person that listens to you. I, I have right God. now. I have. I have. I have right now. Seven hundred seventy-five people. You believe it or not? Seventy-five people that just heard you. Seven hundred seventy-five people, and you cannot said, show them one lie. I said, can you show them one lie? Refuse to come on Facebook. I am. Not, I am not refusing. I am in Facebook already. You donkey. I am in Facebook. I am in Facebook. I post my video in Facebook, which means he can call me here. Doesn't matter where I am. This is internet. You are. You are a coward like him. Your your boyfriend don't have a panty. Maybe you have one, but you don't have a panty. If you have a panty, let him call me. He is a coward. You said I am lying, yet you cannot show me one lie because both of you are a scam. Get lost and never call me here. Let the, let the man of the house call me. That is your your boyfriend. Let the rooster let the rooster call me. What a potato! Christian Prince, you post lies in Facebook. Christian Prince. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is the lie I posted in Facebook? Can you show me one? I'm not going to debate you, a Christian prince, you know. By the way, I might convert to Islam and you might be one of my uh, four roommates. You must be stupid to believe in Islam. How a woman, she can even accept Islam for a second unless she is really mentally ill. How a woman she can agree that a man he can beat her as if she is a goat unless she is mentally ill This is your Quran. Let us see what Islam says about you You women who is a Muslim Chapter 4 verse number 34 Christian Prince you are lying Christian Prince. I show in the screen everything I say Prove me wrong and this is your books and those your websites You are lying Christian Prince, I'm going to hit you with my bra. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. This is your Islamic books. This is how stupid the Quran is, and this is how filthy this book is. Do you see it? Scourge them. If you suspect that your wife, she might be in a stage of going to be disobedient. You, she is not even disobedient yet. You jail them in their rooms. You scream at them. And you scourge them. But don't be exaggerating. How we can scourge our women? The hadith explained that. Muhammad in the hadith, he said, Beat them until you make their skin greener than their clothes. This is accepted this time, and let us prove that. Liar, huh? 
my boyfriend, he is very knowledgeable. <laughs> oh boy, desperate old woman looking, looking, looking for a man. That's why she convert. Read with me. This is a woman. This is a story of a Muslim woman because the filthy rules of Muhammad, who made an order that if a female woman she has divorced three times from her husband, she cannot get back to her husband Rifa unless she sleep and have intercourse with other men. And not only that, she have to taste his orgasm and he have to taste her orgasm. Rafa divorced his wife for upon Abdul Rahman bin Az 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 Zubair al Qurazi married her. So this is a woman she used to be married to a guy his name is Rufa. Now she is married to a man his name is Abdul Rahman. What happened? I should say that a lady came wearing a green veil and complained to her uh, uh, of her husband and showed her a green spot in her skin caused by beating. It was the habit of ladies to support each other. You see, they are saying to you she is not supporting her because she's right. No, she's supporting her because there are women supporting each other. So when Allah messenger Came, Aisha said, I have not seen any suffering women suffer, suffer uh, women suffering as much as a believing woman. So Aisha here confirmed that a Muslim woman, she is the worst in life. She have no good life. She is suffering the worst. Who is witnessing for that? Aisha. She is witnessing that between all, between all the women of the Arab, no woman is suffering as much as a believing woman. Look, look at her skin. Her skin is a greener than her clothes. Her skin, this is not, they say to us, you beat her light beating, right? Look at this. This is light beating. Her skin is a greener than her clothes. When Abdul Rahman, he heard that his wife had gone to the prophet, he came with his two sons from other wife. And she said, by Allah, I have done no wrong to him. He is impotent and he is useless to me like this, which means his penis is not working. Look how filthy the society, look how disgusting those people are. Holding, showing the, 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 the fringe of her garment. Abdul, Abu Abdul Rahman said, by Allah, by Allah, O Messenger of Allah. She showed, she told a lie. I'm very, very strong. I can't satisfy her. What is enough? What is next? Maybe he's going to hold his private part and he will do it live. I'm very strong. I can't satisfy her. But she is disobedient and she want to go back to Rifa. Aha, now we know what's happening. This woman, she married this man because the filthy Muhammad, the mad Muhammad, the crazy Muhammad, he made a rule that if a woman, she divorced her husband or a man divorced her, his wife, sorry, three times, she cannot get back to him unless she marry a new husband and he F her and he tastes her juice and she tastes his juice, which is orgasm. And then and only then she can go back to the husband. So now this woman, she married this new man, but she don't want to sleep with him. She wants him to get back as a tool to get back to the previous husband. So look what happened. Allah Messenger said to her, if that is <coughs> your intention, <coughs> then know that it's unlawful for you to remarry Rafa unless, unless Abdul Rahman, he tastes your juice. You see in the translation, they say, until he has sexual relationship. What kind of religion making a rule? That a woman she cannot go back to her husband unless she goes sleep with the new man. And that man he have to test her orgasm, and she have to test his orgasm. Until he tastes your orgasm. This is a prophet of God. And not only that, the man he did beat the hell of his wife, and then Muhammad he sponsored him by beating your wife. It's lawful for you. Did Muhammad say why you beat your wife? No, he was against the women, and he judged for the, for the, for for the man that he's right. He said to her, "If you are, if this is your attention, you should know it's not lawful for you." And as you see, Muhammad is taking the side of the man perfectly. So we beat the women, we make her skin greener than her clothes. And yet they say to me, you are lying. Where is my lies? I'm showing you everything I say, and this is the reference. Prove me wrong. Why you don't put the information in context? 
uh, Sarah, she is saying that. Okay, Sarah, go ahead. <coughs> Let's see what Sarah was saying. His wife, and then Muhammad, he sponsored him. Hello? Yes, Sarah, you said I am not putting things in context. What does that mean? Um, my everything has a context like the okay what is the context that i can beat my wife until i make her skin green her clothes and then i say that you have to sleep with a new husband so you can go back to the old husband go ahead um when i say in context i'm talking about historical context right well, so this is this is a historic the story in front of us as it is i read the whole story i did not even cut a letter from it right so you do know that with islam came the revolution of, of everything like what Women quickly gained rights and in inheritance in that's in false, that's false, that's happened. false, that's false, that's false, that's false. Women is before Islam they inherit everything, not only that, they used to be very rich. As an example, Muhammad himself he used to work for Khadija. Is that true? Yeah, but she was a widow, right? She's a widow, which means she inherited her husband. Is that correct? She inherited everything from her husband. Yes, so, so this is she, she was not a she was not a Muslim woman, is that correct? I guess. Okay, so, so women they have their right, and not only that, she was the boss of Muhammad. Is that correct? Right. Okay, so, so she so she uh, have right, and she is a businesswoman. She have an inheritance. She uh, she is independent. She is the boss. What is next? Islam make the women wear a veil. Became inside the box, and you are the one who said to me when you called me first time. You said that the wives of the prophet they have no right to go around. They have to stay home. Didn't you say that to me? But before Islam. Women, she was a queen. Women, she was a leader. Women, she was a counselor. Women, she was a, a, a businesswoman, as an example, Khadija herself. So Islam destroy you and make you just a sex toy. Where is your what is your what is your proof? You, you are the one who just told me before that the wife of the prophet they have to stay home. No, no, your proof that you know Arabia was you know this kind of. What do you mean you never heard of the queens on in 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 arabia and other country around who is cleopatra who is who is zenobia who is who who is who is khadija is it khadija she was a businesswoman before islam what's all what's wrong with you who is um who is who, who 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 is you know there's there is many famous women in the history of arabia what are you talking about there's many queens so those are w women you know even even the quran speak about Suleiman flying all the way from jerusalem over the flying carpet to see the queen of sheba the queen of sheba not the king of sheba so after islam where is the queen of sheba what happened to yemen since when yemen when the last time yemen have a queen isn't it your prophet he said that a woman she lead her nation they will never be successful which means it's forbidden for women to be a leader in islam Okay, so what I'm talking about is from a legal perspective, right? So legal, legal. Yeah, you, you said to me that Islam down. gave the women a right. Islam took all the right from women. Islam made the women a sex toy. As you see here, Muhammad is forcing the women to sleep with the man. She don't want him. Obviously, this is rape. The women, she don't want to sleep with the man. The man is beating her to force her to sleep with him. Muhammad, he took the side of the man over the women, and he is forcing her to sleep with the man. Where's the right? Yeah, but you're talking about hadith, right? So what I'm saying doesn't matter. Hadith is your prophet word. All right. So what I'm saying, from my knowledge, right? I know that Arabia was very oppressive to women. So woman would. That's a lie, my friend. That's a lie. That's a lie. Here we go. Look at the Arab Christians. Are they oppressed to women? We don't have Islam. We don't believe in Islam. Are we oppressed to women? That's a big fat lie. If the Arab are oppressed to women, we are Arab Christians. Show me how the Arab Christian they oppress their wives. Okay, so does the Bible in the Bible does it have any um, inheritance laws for women? Sure, the women she inherit. Yes, the women she inherit in the Bible. In Islam, the, the, the women in Islam, women one one man equal to two women, correct? No, no, no. So in Islam, in Islam, the women is equal to two. The man is equal to two women, even in the witnessing in the court. Is that correct? No. What do you mean now? It's not correct. Oh boy. So women and men are equal in, in goodness in, in front of God's in front of Allah's eyes, they are equal. However, men are given daraja, meaning that they have a step above women. Lady, I don't know I what's wrong. What's, what's I don't know what are you talking about? Here we go. 
Let us see. Let us see. You said no, right? You said women they don't have half have uh, right as as uh, as the men. Let us see. Mm. Let us see. <laughs> can you t can you put the TV down, please? Okay. All right. All right, let us go to the Quran and see uh, what the Quran says about women. You said it's not true that women she don't rate equal to the man. I don't know what kind of Islam you are learning, but obviously you have nothing. You know, you have no idea what are you talking about. <coughs> if we go in, in the Quran, <coughs> we will find the following. Chapter uh, chapter four verse number eleven. Do you see the verse? Yeah. Okay. Does it say that one male is equal to two females? In terms of inheritance, yeah. Hmm. So why you said no? With the male, what is equal to the share of two females? Hmm. But if there are only daughters, two or more? Hmm. So, yes, a woman in that um, century. Hmm. But you said no. But you said no. You said no. You said no. I told you that the one man, he inherited equal to two women. You said no. This is from an economical perspective. Right? What so, economical perspective? Uh, this is this is how it is. This is how this is. The inheritance is about economy. It's about money. It's about property. What are you talking about? Same time. The Quran here he said a stupid thing. It says if two females, you know, if, there, if one man is equal to two females, all right. Now, and he's talking about two females. If two, if if if, if male is uh, you know equal to two females, and then he says to you, let me show you in Arabic so you can get and get a better understanding. It says, فإن كن نساء فوق إثنتين فلهن ثلث ما ترك. If they are more than two. They have the third of what what the parent left. I mean, this is a crazy because yeah, this, is, because this is impossible mathematically. This is impossible. I will give you an example. If I have, I have if I have one thousand dollar, if I have one thousand dollar, and I have one male and five females. How we can divide the one thousand dollar between? The one male and two female and, and five females. Okay, so what I'm saying, right? When you're mm. putting things into context, you should mention, you know, how Arabia was. Well, how Arabia was? You said to me that you see, you, you, you swallow your word. A second ago, you said to me this is not a true, and now it's a true. Same time, as you see, the woman she is not allowed to eat to be equal uh, inheritance to the man, but before okay. the woman she can, and now not only that. The women she is not allowed to witness in the court. She can witness only in the case of writing. Is that correct? Is this in the Quran? This is in the Quran, yeah. <laughs> All right, so from my so, knowledge... Right? So why the women she cannot witness in the court in the case of murder? You tell me why. <clears throat> What is the wisdom? Where, Why, is that, where is it? Where is that in the Quran? That well, the, you can't, Quran well, well, the Quran is making it clear that women they can witness only in the case of borrowing money, as simple as that. And the funny, you know, the Muslim they say to me, I never heard this before. They, you know, I, each time I say something to them, they told me I never heard this before. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا تدينتم بدين إلى أجل مسمى فكتبوه ليكتب بينكم etc and it says here go down فإن لم يكن رجلين فرجل وامرأتان مما ترتضون read it only in the case of money borrowing a woman she can be a witness and two women equal to one man as simple as that okay so when we're looking at it from 
that society's perspective. Who is he keeps saying it from that society perspective? Why so women she cannot be a witness in the court? Can Why only in the case of money? Only what if a woman she saw a crime? What if one million women they saw a man murdering a man? Why we cannot give them the right to be witnesses? Can I finish? Go ahead. Okay, so <clears throat> from in that like in that, in that era, hmm. this was considered like a, a feminist revolution. Women were legally allowed to inherit property. They got rights that they Lady, did not have. Women, they were allowed to inherit full legally before Islam. Islam make it partially inheritance, not right. fully. In, okay, so where is the revolution here? I'm talking about Arabia. Okay. I'm talking about Arabia too. Isn't it Khadija? You are the one who just said to me that Khadija, she inherited the full money of her husband's. Okay, so then tell me what government did Lady, they have? Just go, just go, just go. I, I, you know. Unbelievable and people they say to me you have no patient 